Today we're going to talk about an update to Propecia that is very, very important. Actually, as you know, Propecia, the brand name is, is, is Propecia, but the generic name is Finasteride. Finasteride comes in two doses, one milligram and five milligrams. The five milligram dose is Proscar, the, the, the brand that's been used for um, lar enlarged prostate. What we're going to specifically talk about today is what is the effect of Finasteride on your prostate? Okay, is it increased prostate cancer? Does it decrease prostate cancer? Does it affect it? Does it, how does it affect your PSA and all those things? These are really important things that you should know if you're, being, if you're going to take Propecia. First, off, first of all, Propecia is a brand name for a one milligram dose of finasteride compared to Proscar, which is the five milligram dose. The study in the past has shown that the efficacy or the benefit of a one milligram finasteride dose is equivalent to a five milligram uh, finasteride dose for hair loss. So you do not need to take a five milligram dose for um, hair loss. Now some people take the Proscar because it's a lot less expensive than uh, Propecia and cut it into, into quarters. Very, very important you understand that in my opinion it's still more efficacious to use the, the brand name of Propecia, the finasteride one milligram. However, you can, it's much better that in my opinion is still to try to take some kind of finasteride even at a cut dose um, compared to no finasteride if you're trying to treat hair loss. So that's really efficacy. I want to talk more about um, how it relates to the prostate. So let's start with an easy topic which is the PSA or prostate specific antigen. If you don't know what that is, you're probably either a woman or a young gentleman. Um, usually men over a certain age, for example over 50 or over 60 when they start having a risk of prostate cancer, there's a screening called a PSA or prostate specific antigen. It, the, it is a marker that indicates what the likelihood is that you're having a prostate cancer. It's obviously not a, a surefire uh, test but it's a test that gives you an indicator whether you're, you have um, a likelihood of having a prostate cancer. It's a screening tool. Uh, for those people that are on Propecia, you need to know that the PSA value is actually halved. So when, you, when you're taking it, you need to tell your doctor that you're on Propecia and that your PSA number will need to be doubled roughly, about 50 to 55 percent reduction um, when you're on finasteride. And the interesting thing is if you're either on the 5 milligram dose, the Proscar, or the 1 milligram dose of Propecia, the having effect of, of the PSA is almost the same. So you're not going to necessarily get much more reduction in your PSA um, with, with the 5 milligram dose of Proscar. Now that doesn't mean that it's good or bad in terms of the prostate, but let's talk about how does it relate to the risk of prostate cancer. The initial studies in 2005, most of all the studies were done with Proscar, the 5 milligram dose. These were not studies done with Propecia, so it's an extrapolation of um, what the effect with Propecia would be for you. So using some of the initial 2005 studies, they found that over long-term studies that there was potentially a 25% reduction in prostate cancer in the initial studies. And the reason for that is they, they looked at the number of prostate cancers that were, that were occurring in individuals with, uh, with on Proscar versus those who are not, and they found there was about a roughly about 25% reduction in the chance of long-term prostate cancer. Subsequent to that study, they actually sort of um, were a bit frightened. There was a big flurry in 2005-2006 uh, in, in in which they uh, did biopsies on the, these patients that were on finasteride and they found that there was actually a higher Gleason score of 8, 9, or 10. Now Gleason score is the malignancy risk. In other words, it was a higher, um, uh, higher cancer um, type and so people were very frightened to be on finasteride of any kind because they thought it worsened their cancer risk. What they found in subsequent studies of about 500 samples of prostates is that um, it was an artifact. An artifact is a scientific word to mean that it was a false reading. And the reason of that is that the actual prostate itself shrunk in size so that when the needle went in for a biopsy, there was a higher chance of getting a malignancy because it was taking uh, a, a chance, it was getting a much less needle in the haystack, if you will, and actually capturing the uh, cancer compared to a random biopsy in a larger area. So, th so, the, so to summarize where we are um, today in 2009 is that we think that with Proscar, the 5 milligram dose, that there is actually um, a better long-term reduction of prostate cancer, although this is obviously not with certainty. And so we don't know enough to say with this with certainty, but that there may be a long-term um, protection against prostate cancer for those individuals who are on a 5 milligram 
proscar dose. So it's just something I think it's good to know. Now, how does that reflect if you're just taking the one milligram dose with the Propecia? The answer is we don't know exactly, but it's something that we could extrapolate and say that if we're getting about a 25% reduction of long-term can uh, prostate cancer risk, with the Proscar 5 milligram, perhaps that there would be uh, a similar effect, maybe a slightly less effect with um, Propecia. Some of the recent news in the last few weeks have been following New York Times and other um, uh, newspapers. I've been reading myself about how there is potentially a reduction and people are being advocated to start on Propecia to reduce their long-term risk of prostate cancer. I certainly, as a physician, um, am not a specialist. I'm a specialist in hair, so I recommend your consultation with a uh, certi board-certified urologist that you trust to ask those questions because those questions I think are important. Hopefully that was a good uh, synopsis in terms of how finasteride interacts with the prostate and both in terms of PSA as well as long-term reduction in prostate cancer risk.